So I'm sitting here in this 2021 Polaris Razor and it has zero audio whatsoever. It's got no head unit, no speakers. Now we got a couple challenges. The owner wants to take this out this evening because it's Friday morning. He's ready for a long weekend of playing out in the sand and the mud. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna put a Kicker PB1 power bar right up here on the top of the roll cage to ensure he's got great sound. We've got another challenge. We're not gonna drill any holes or modify this vehicle whatsoever. So is it possible? Absolutely. Let's show you how. We know we're gonna mount the power bar up on the top of the roll bar, but it's gotta get wires to it because yeah, they're not wireless. We don't wanna put the wires on the outside of the bar because that doesn't look good and it's just not safe if you roll it over. So we wanna run the wires inside the bar. Just remember, if you drill or modify this bar whatsoever, you're gonna affect its structural integrity. That might be a safety issue, so we do not recommend altering the bar whatsoever. So we're gonna use these factory drilled holes in the bar that the player's engineers have put in there for us to run our wires to that kicker power bar. As we mentioned, the biggest challenge is running the wire through the roll bar without drilling any holes. What well, first glance, that looks like it's gonna be a problem down here at the base of this roll bar, but it's not. The Polaris engineers have actually given us the liberty of running wires through this without drilling holes with this little hole. This connects to the top, therefore I can run the wire down through the bar, slide this boot back into place, completely concealing the wire and protecting it. As you can see, we're getting pretty close to mounting the kicker power bar to the roll bar. No, these wire ties are not the proper mount. This is a set of helping hands if you're gonna to try to do this yourself. It really makes it a lot easier. Now with the power bar, you get these little mounting feet. These need to be attached to the power bar ahead of time. But remember, these are actually sloped in two different directions. You wanna make sure you get them the same direction so the bar will mount properly. It will also mount to a curve bar up to 30 degrees should you have one. Included with the kicker power bar, you get three different circular clamps to clamp it to the roll bars. You get a one and a half, one and three quarter, and a two inch. If you're gonna mount the power bar to square tubing of three quarter, one, or one and a quarter inch, you can buy an optional accessory pack that allow it to mount to those bars should you be putting it on a golf cart or other vehicle square tubing. So no matter which you use, the square or the round clamps, make sure you use this included rubber strap. That's gonna ensure that the bars can be tightly affixed to the roll bar so it doesn't swing as you're driving the vehicle on rough terrain. Mounting the remote is very simple. Take the included strap, connect it to the back of the remote, wrap it around the steering wheel, fasten it in the buckle, and you're good to go. So we're at the final stages of this install. We've routed the wire under the dash, through the console, making sure we keep clear of the shifter. We've connected the positive to the battery with the fuse very close to the positive lead. In fact, it's about three inches away. And we've connected the ground to the battery. All we need to do now is put the seat in, fire this thing up, and give it a listen. So here we are at the end of our installation journey. The seat's back in, the power bar is mounted and paired up to our Bluetooth device. The steering wheel control is mounted and connected to the power bar. For more information on the operation and functionality of the Kicker power bar, please visit kicker.com and search out any of the training videos or please visit our YouTube channel.